tritium does not drift to other areas, including the Mississippi River that's nearby. There have been a number of videos out there on this Monticello nuclear reactor leak that I've been tagged on, and I'll go ahead and respond to this one. Specifically, what most of them are is just hype. Just saying a nuclear reactor leak, enough is to give somebody a visceral reaction, just terror. And it reminds me of a book I reviewed once, an anti-nuclear book, where it pointed out that nuclear reactors are releasing millions and millions of curies of radioactivity every year. And that sounds horrible, right? Millions, <clears throat> millions of curies. Well, when you actually look at that, that means an curie is about 10 to the minus 18. And so it's almost an infinitesimally small number. When you say millions and millions of it, it sounds really bad, right? And so saying that you have hundreds of thousands of gallons of radioactive water, that can sound similarly scary. And in all of these cases, it comes down to what's the dose? What's the real risk? Just because I can come up with a metric that sounds big doesn't mean something's dangerous. It just means that I can use a metric that makes it sound really scary. And so when it comes to the tritium from the Monticello plant, it comes down to what is the hazard potential to the environment, to the public, and to workers. And as long as that's well within the regulatory limits, by definition, that makes it safe. It means that we're being sufficiently conservative that nothing bad can happen that's measurable. Uh, and the, you might say, well, I, I don't want anything bad to happen even if it's not measurable. Well, then you've got to ask yourself, how much are you willing to pay to avoid something that's not measurable? And that's really what it needs to come down to is what is the cost effectiveness of a control when you can spend your money on something that you can see a difference in? like social programs or food, uh, shelter, clothing, things that make a difference. You can spend money on that and see it, or you can spend a lot of money to avoid radiological risk that's too small to be measured. And that generally is what happens when it comes down to these kinds of inflating numbers, making things sound really, really scary by coming up with rhetoric and narratives that sound really, really bad when in fact the risk is negligible. It's so small you can't even see a difference. And that tends to be the case when it comes to reporting on nuclear incidents is you make it sound like you want to listen to this and that's going to spread and, and that gets the clicks and the views that you want when you're doing any kind of news or anything like that. So uh, that's been my experience from many, many decades of uh, working in the nuclear industry and in academia. So I hope that helps. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of videos coming out on this that seem to be inflammatory. So thanks for watching. Bye.